Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host for the day. Uh, I do have a few point of logistics before we get started. Uh, due to the short nature of this webinar, we will not be fielding questions. However, if you do have questions, our presenter will share her email address at the end of the presentation. Uh, today's webinar is a lead up to the LPPDE Europe 2019 event, which takes place June 11th through the 14th in Malmo, Sweden. Uh, we ask that you please consider joining us as it's a great opportunity to meet uh, some of the top thought leaders in the product and process development space. You can learn more about this conference by visiting www.lppde.org. And you'll also receive an email shortly after this webinar with a link to the website. So with that said, let me introduce our presenter for today, who is actually also a member of the LPPDE board and is co-chair of this year's conference, Suzanne Van Egmond. Hello, Suzanne Dwayne. worked for more than 20 years in product development roles at Philips. In the last 10 years, uh, seven of which have been spent on training, coaching, and advising in product uh, development areas uh, on project teams, project managers, and development leaders. She's going to first share a little bit about uh, the workshop that she's going to be presenting at the upcoming conference. First of all, I think it's fascinating and there's some tie in to things that she'll be talking about, as well as how she got involved in uh, LPPDE as an organization. So for now, Suzanne, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. OK, thank you, Dwayne. Uh, hello. All. Um, just uh, after the introduction of Dwayne, there's not a lot to be said. Uh, on my on myself, so uh, I maybe to add, I have a, a master degree in applied physics from the University of Eindhoven. I'm working in Philips, and I am a board member of the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange. What is interesting to know, in addition, is that uh, after the seven years of uh, Lean Product Development coaching, internal consultancy, I've been uh, re Turned, I, I have returned to operational work in R&D, so I work as a project manager myself now, applying my own advice, and that deepens my uh, understanding and skills, hence also this uh, presentation, uh, which is one of the things that I, uh, that I learned going along. Uh, for the L LPPDE Europe uh, 2019 in Malmö, uh, I have uh, scheduled a uh, workshop on lean project management. So among this, uh, this uh, topic of the presentation, I will also talk about how do you actually manage uh, lean projects, how do you plan them, that type of things. So uh, if you are interested, please go to the website and read some more. Um, I trust that most of you know Philips uh, as the big uh, health technology company. Uh, Philips is transferring the strategy from a generic electronics company to a health technology company uh, being uh, visible in healthy living, uh, tre uh, diagnosis, treatment, and aftercare. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Uh, we are going to talk about um, did you capture that? And did you capture that is the tagline that I use when I manage projects. I use it very often towards team members when they tell they have learned something. And I will talk about it, why I do that. So um, when you have a decision in a project, and uh, as you all know, innovation projects have a lot of decisions in them. Um, because we are doing new things, so we have to decide how we execute on certain functions, parameters, and so on. Uh, if we want to do that well, we need to have knowledge. Because if you have the knowledge, it is less likely that you have to return to a decision and have rework as a result. But having that knowledge is not enough. You also need to align on it, uh, because otherwise stakeholders think the knowledge is not on the table, and they will return to the decisions by themselves as well. So we need to figure out how we can get the knowledge to make the right decisions and how we are aligned about it. 
So I developed this way of working. Uh, of course, I didn't invent it all myself. So I, I, I uh, uh, learned from, uh, from others, also with LPPDE and the other lean product development experts uh, that are writing books and other, other persons. Um, and I, I was applying that on a project and unfortunately I work in front end project so I can't share so much about what it was, but it was a pro product architecture for a new product platform in coffee. Um, it is not yet on the market so hence I can't say a lot of, about it. And it was in the front end and there were many trade off decisions to be made uh, within and between sets. So there's this word sets. So what is sets? Uh, that was because we were mixing in the set-based way of working. So the LPPDE uh, Europe 2019 in Malmö has the theme success is assured. And success is assured is the tagline that the Wright brothers used towards each other because they were sure that they were making the right decisions. And it's also the title of a new book by Michael and Brian Kennedy and Penny Cloft. And the three people that wrote that book will also come to the conferences and do keynotes and workshops with you. Um, and they actually explain in that book how to do set base and how to do causal mapping in, uh, in a uh, front end development project or actually anywhere in development. And I think it's a terrific book and you get it for half the price if you are registered for LPD. Anyhow, so when I was doing this project, I mixed in set based concepts. So for those that do not know what it is, I have just a short uh, characterization. So what you do is you uh, split your product into sets. It's a part of a concept, you could say. So it's a part of the, of the product, like technical things, like user interface or housing parts. Uh, you see also the picture of the helicopter, so it could be the rudder or the, the, the windows, window section or that type of things. Um, it could also be non-technical aspects like the service concept or the business model that you choose. And then the idea is when you are in the beginning of a development, you have multiple alternatives per set. So you can do many different things, of course, and you have to select for each of the sets where you want to go. In order to be able to make a selection, we need to make visible what are the gaps, what are the knowledge gaps that we have, and what are the trade-off decisions that we will need to make. And when we are then making the trade-off decisions, we try to optimize in the solution space towards what we call the sweet spot. So in these projects, I used a, a planning board. It's a set planning board. Um, and actually, it's a normal learning board, as you also could see in rapid learning cycles or that type of concepts. But it has added to the left the blue nodes, which are the sets and the owner of each of the sets. And the green nodes, they are the alternative options that we have for it, for that set. So, for example, the set may, might be um, the user interface, and then the owner might be the user interface owner, the one that is in the project consolidating all the information on the user interface. And then the alternative options may be, for example, we have buttons, we have buttons and LEDs, we have a screen, that type of things. Then uh, you see the columns, they are actually the week. So the orange things are weeks or learning cycles. And then the yellow ones are the yellow no stickies are knowledge gaps. So they are questions that need to be answered in order to be able to make the decisions, which are in pink. So in this particular project, we decided to group the decisions into integration in events. So every, every, uh, every two weeks or every four weeks, and depending on the phase and the stage of the project, we had this integration events where we would get gather together and talk about what we learned and make the decisions that were planned. So this board then shows where we were working on. So then the next question is, how do you now do this alignment? So what we developed was a cascade of A3 reports. Let's start from the top. So we started from a set A3, and that is a new concept. You do not see that, so actually I didn't see it somewhere around already, so uh, we, we just uh, made it ourselves. Um, and in that set A3, you actually write down, so let's take the example of the user interface, and 
again, what are the requirements for user interface? What should it do? Um, and uh, in, to what level should it do that? So what are the critical customer interests for that, for that set? Then uh, the interfaces of the set. So how do the different, uh, uh, how does this set interface with other sets? So, and how does that interface look like? Or is it maybe still open? That's also valuable information. What are then the key knowledge gaps that we see and the key decisions? So from there, you go to what we call a knowledge A3. So you go and learn about the knowledge in the, uh, on the knowledge gaps, the ones that are at the highest priority you start. And then when you learn something, you capture that learning into a knowledge A3. This is, uh, this is also called knowledge gap report, for example, in some other systems. The knowledge A3 is then floating into a decision A3. And the decision A3 is a A3 that is dedicated to a certain decision. Uh, I now realize I forgot to tell what A3 is about. So some of you might not understand. It's just the size of the paper. So it refers to two A4s. It's an A3 or two letters in the US. Um, then the decision A3 has the decision. It has what did we all learn and what we then propose to decide. And then that decision A3 can be used in a meeting to introduce a certain decision and talk about it. And then it will refer back to the knowledge A3s and the set A3s that are underneath. So the whole thing here uh, builds on the, on the um, quote that I found in the Success is Assured book. It says, equally informed people seldom disagree. And then you think, well, but that is maybe a little bit fairy tale. But what you see is if you are consistently sharing the knowledge A3s and the decision A3s throughout the project with the stakeholders, then they will be taken along much better and they will be informed and they will be less uh, jumpy maybe yes, to, uh, to, get, uh, to, get, uh, uh, to, to interfere with the project. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the set A3. So this is the format that we were using for it. So to the left side of the A3, you see that there are the requirements, the relations between requirements, which you also can call a causal map. So it shows the trade-offs that, uh, that you need to make and the key interfaces with other sets and elements. And while you are going along and you feel the thing, you will, um, you will stumble upon knowledge gaps alternative options and decisions to make and that is the right side of the a3 so what you then do is you prioritize your key knowledge gaps your decisions if needed uh, you put them in time and also the alternatives you will already look whether they are weaker alternatives and whether you want to take them all along or not so when you start filling the set a3 you also start filling the learning board and then we decided to the right bottom to add uh, a little table with the parameters that were high level defined for, for the project. So which parameters are important for the project. And then we would write whether this particular set affects that uh, aspect or not. Okay, so what we have here is the integration events. So uh, I was telling that every, uh, every two weeks or every four weeks, depending on the stage in the project, we would uh, we would have the integration events, and these are events with the team and also with the stakeholders. In some cases, we would do it immediately with all the people, so team and stakeholders. And in other cases, we would first consolidate with the team and then present to the stakeholders and have them decide, uh, depending also on the stage of the project and where the newness also of the way of working. So what we would do in there is actually two things. We would present the work in progress. So in the learning board, the blue arrow shows where we are. That is the integration event. And then the knowledge gaps that are in the green boxes, you can see there is being worked on a pre preparing a certain decision, but it's not yet now. So you would only share the work in progress. So you would share, this is what we are learning. Um, this is the knowledge gaps that we have closed, and these are that we plan we, we plan to still close until this decision. 
Then the second thing is the uh, decisions themselves. So also what we would do is having uh, decision A3s. Um, and those decision A3s would then uh, ex uh, summarize the learning so far and recommend what would be the uh, um, what, would, what would be the uh, recommended decisions decision and then the stakeholders would use that information to also confirm that decision or maybe do another decision. So the A3s, uh, both of the knowledge as, as also the decision A3s are shared up front uh, obviously to ensure people are prepared. Then the other thing is, how do you then get prepared for such an integration event? And then it's important that it's actually not, you are not preparing for the integration event as such. You, you work uh, on the documents that you need for the integration event in the moment. So it's something that so when you learn something, I was asking, did you capture that? And the person would write an A3. The reason for that is that um, when you uh, when you have uh, looked at your, for example, you were doing an experiment, and then you uh, most of the time you sit down with colleagues and discuss the data and discuss the consequences of the data. You also make some graphs and then you redo some of them to uh, to make even better ones. And then you have a very clear picture: what did you actually learn and what is now the next step? And at that point, I would ask that you capture that. And the person would need only like 30 to maybe 60 minutes, but a very short time to write down the, the learning in an A3. And the reasons for that is that it's A, it's a real concise format, and B, it is in the moment. So it he wouldn't, the person wouldn't need time to, to figure out what was it that I did and go back to the lab and get, figure out what was uh, what were the measurement equipment used and other things because uh, if you do it later you won't, might not remember but if you do it now you just have it in your head so and the side effect of that is that you capture the knowledge while you get along and that knowledge is likely to be shared so when someone writes something people naturally start sharing it. So you can use it in the team meetings, for example. Uh, people will send it to their functional leaders um, and people will then start talking about what they were learning. And that enriches not only the learning, but it will also ensure that stakeholders are more, let's say, on the ball all the time and uh, reading about the project uh, more often than only in the meetings that they attend. So how do you, if you are interested in implementing, how do you then implement such? So the thing about the cascaded A3, it's a very simple concept and it sells itself in a way. So people that wrote an A3 and saw what it did, they most of the time come back to me, whoa, this is really good. It works and it doesn't cost me a lot of time. But people that are not, used to it, they will claim that capturing takes too much time, we need to continue with the experiments. Uh, they are not used to capture in the moment, so they are not used to project managers asking, did you capture that? Um, so, um, and that is because if you do it after fact, for example, after you did a couple of months of work, then it tends to take a long time to capture what you all did. And so people have that experience already from their students' time that uh, that they they write like months on a, on the document, uh, and therefore they they will will resist the idea to capture in the moment in the beginning. So what I was doing, I wrote one or two A3s as an example, and then showed how that would look like and how it worked, and then I convinced one person in the project and coached that one person to write A3s for a particular event that we had. And in the evaluation of that event, I steered the discussion towards effectiveness of the discussion and then had the team compare what happened to the effectiveness of the discussion with an A3 and without an A3. And then you can guess the answer. If you have an A3, the discussion is much more smooth. It's the oil of the, of the sharing. And then all the time the question is, 
did you capture that? So we are already at the closure of this webinar. Uh, to summarize, uh, I started with the statement that you, if having the knowledge is great, but it's not enough. The set A3s help to scope the work. The knowledge A3s and decision A3s are used to keep people rowing in the same uh, rowing in the same boat and in the same direction or, or even. So it helps to uh, it is the oil of the sharing and the alignment. And it is an effort that you do throughout the project and not only on milestones, not only on integration events. You always ask, did you capture that? So as Duane said at the start, there is no uh, possibility to ask questions in the moment in this webinar. Uh, but if you want to uh, ask a question, then feel free to reach out to me at susanne.van.egmond at philips.com. Thank you. Well, thank you, Suzanne. And and I will, uh, uh, if anybody has interest in contacting Suzanne, uh, feel free to email me as, as well as you'll have my email and I can forward those along. Um, so Suzanne, thank you, uh, not only for your thought leadership uh, in this, this space, but thanks for your uh, service to the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange. Uh, and and thanks, though, uh, thanks to those who participated in the session today. And just a, a suggestion, you might consider using this recorded webinar uh, as perhaps a lunch and learn. We know many companies will use these as an opportunity to all watch together in a conference room, uh, perhaps around a, a meal, uh, and discuss the implications for your organization. So certainly encourage you to share this throughout your organization. And just a final reminder uh, for those who are interested in the Lean Product and Process Development Exchange, which takes place June 11th through the 14th in Malmo, Sweden. You can learn more at LPPDE. Dot org. So thanks again, Susan, and thanks to everyone for participating in today's webinar. Have a great day. Bye-bye.